Good evening, dear students from all over Egypt. Welcome to today's session. With you today, Ms. Amani Shoki Said Badawi, Arbia Governorate, Ms. Samar Yahya, Alexandria Governorate, and me, Ms. Wafah Soub, Suha Governorate. Hello, Ms. Amani, nice to have you with me today. Thank you. Hello, Ms. Wafah. It's nice to have you all, and I hope you all enjoy our session today. It's all about revision. Of course, we finished our curriculum and today we are starting our revision. We start with two parts. We will uh, revise with you the writing and uh, of course it's the, the different types of essay, how to write it and the punctuation because it's pretty important for you. And the second part of our uh, session today, we will have a general revision on your curriculum, inshallah. So shall we start, Ms. Amani? Yes, let's go. Okay. So, uh, of course, as usual, you have to tell us your name and we will add your governorate, inshallah. So, try to write them before you start answering the form. Yes, Ms. Amani? Yes, and we have uh, what is the first sentence of a paragraph called? Yes, when we are writing a paragraph, what is it called? The topic sentence, the closing sentence, the supporting sentence, the concluding sense. Of course, here we have to think quickly about what to omit from our choices and it cause the first sentence of the paragraph couldn't be number B, closing sentence, never, because it's closing. And number D, of course, concluding also, it means closing. So we have two to omit quickly. We have now number A and number C. Let's see here a topic sentence or the supporting sentence. What do you think the first sentence will be the topic sentence or the supporting sentence? See, it's very clear. And of course, here we have to deal with the care. Yes, that's number A and a good answer. Yes, topic sentence is the first sentence. After that comes the supporting sentence. Well done. Thank you. OK, continue with number three. Dear students, what is a paragraph? What is a paragraph, not an essay? So concentrate, please. Is it A, a series of sentences that talk about various subjects made up of only one sentence? A series of sentences that talk about the same subject or a series of paragraphs about one main idea. What do you think, dear students? Huh. Well, um, of course, a paragraph, it's a, a unity of sentence that's connected together to discuss one topic, to discuss one subject, OK? Not different or variety of subjects. So let's eliminate. So the first one is not correct because it's a series of sentences that talk about various subjects. No, no, no. A paragraph, okay, it's a unit of sentences that talk about one subject that discuss uh, school, pollution, um, hobbies, and so on, okay? Uh, made up of only one sentence, no, a paragraph is a set of sentences, at least three to five sentences, okay? A series of sentences that talk about the same subject, of course, this is the correct one, and the last one is not correct too. So the correct answer should be C. Yes, and we go on with number B, uh, number four, I'm sorry. And uh, well done. Uh, which of the following would be best topic for argument paragraph, argument paragraph? Which topic? Green is my favorite color, giving my opinion about it. War can lead to many deaths. Argument, paragraph, argument. So two opinions. The new laws was a wise decision. Lion eat meat. So argument, there is not a fact. Okay. Here, which one would be best topic for argument? Here we have, of course, green is my favorite color. It's an opinion. War can lead to many deaths. It's fact. 
And number D, line it meat, of course, it's another factor. No here argument about it. I can't argue with your opinion and I can't say that war is no, it's good. So number C is uh, the new law was a wise decision. So I'm going to say my opinion and you say your opinion. Yes, so it's number C. Well done. Okay, and moving to number five. Which paragraph tells a story? Huh, tells you a story. Is it a descriptive paragraph, a persuasive paragraph, expository paragraph, or a narrative paragraph? What do you think, dear students? Huh, what do you think? Descriptive paragraph, what does uh, it do to you? Or how can we write a descriptive paragraph? Well, you describe, okay? Uh, you describe um, a window, you describe a home, you describe a life, a tree, and so on. So um, uh, the rose is, uh, or the garden is full of roses, red, blue, and yellow, uh, has uh, green trees, and so on. So a descriptive paragraph, okay? It doesn't tell you a story. It describes things. Well, a persuasive a paragraph, it tries to persuade you to do things, okay? It's not telling you a story. So the only one that gives you uh, a story, it's a narrative paragraph, okay? You tell uh, people around you or you tell the audience a story about something, a story about um, uh, a factory, about uh, life, about whatever you want. It tells you a story. It's a narrative paragraph, of course. Yes, and seven. Okay. And now with number six, and uh, which is an example of cause and effect, cause and effect, something and the effect of it. She used to play video games for hours. That's why her eyesight has become weaker. She plays video game and the internet slow down. Okay. She stopped playing video game when she started school. Take care, cause and effect, something and its effect. She bought a new video game. You see here, she bought a new video game, something she's telling me about what she did. So it can't be a cause and effect. She bought it, that's all. And the stop playing, stop playing when she entered. No, she is not, there is no cause for it. So she plays video game and so this is an, an addition for something. And so what? It's number A. She used to play video game. That's why it is an effect for what happened to her eyes become weaker. It's number A. OK, and moving to number seven, dear students, choose the supporting sentence for this topic sentence. So we have a sentence here and we need to choose a supporting sentence or the illustrating sentence for this. I have to look for another job. I have to look for another job. So what's the suitable sentence as a subordinate for this one? A, I'm lucky that I have still have a job. B, the job is very hard. C, as we have another child, my salary isn't enough for our family. Or D, we have A and B. So what do you think, dear students? I have to look for another job. Huh. What's a supporting sentence? You, you know what supporting sentence? It gives you um, some sort of um, reasons or, or why we are uh, looking for another job. It gives you illustration, gives you reasons, gives you um, uh, things to tell about this sentence. So I have to look for another job. Huh. Is it because I'm lucky or the job is very hard or or as we have another child, my salary isn't enough for our family. So here I give you the reasons for why I have to look for another one. So this is a supporting sentence for uh, that explains the, the, the first sentence or the sentence that we have here. OK, so the correct answer should be C. Yes, Nsaman. 
Yes, and we continue with number eight. Please leave bags at the entrance. Space, mobile phone must be turned off. Okay. However, therefore, furthermore, for instance, this is the sentence, the first sentence, please leave the bags at the entrance. This is an order or some regulation. Okay, that's one. And another regulation, we have uh, and comma after it, mobile phone must be turned off. Must. Someone, something at the beginning, and this is another one. Okay, however, you think however it could be here? Therefore, mobile phone must be turned off. Furthermore, something to add it to the for an instant, mobile phone must be turned off. So here I am get, getting on the meeting and the regulation said, leave the bags at the entrance. Something else is going to tell me about this mobile phone. So it's not, however, it's not explaining, however, uh, therefore, for that reason, no, I need to what? It's yes, it's number C. Good. Yes, number C. So it's furthermore, addition for this, I needed to mobile to be turned off. Yes, Ms. Ofa. Okay, moving to number nine. The marketing campaign was successful. Space, sales of the products haven't increased as much as expected. So concentrate, please. Which one to choose? However, therefore, furthermore, or for an instance. So, concentrate on the sentence. The marketing campaign was successful. You know what's a marketing campaign? Okay, when you try to market for a product, uh, whether it's a soup or a cream or something like that, and you put many, many advertisements about it, just for what? To make people buy it. OK, so you expect plenty of people to uh, buy this product. That's why it's successful. You expect that many people or plenty of people will buy it. But concentrate here. Sales of the product haven't increased as much as expected. So which one is suitable here? Is it however, therefore, or furthermore, or for instance, so? Huh? You know the meaning of uh, each one of them, okay? Huh. The one that gives you a contradiction, dear students, okay? So here we have a sentence, and in con contradict of it, okay, the opposite of the sentence, the first sentence is the, the sentence here. So the suitable word to express or to, to give you uh, two sentences that ain't contradicted to each other is however, however, okay? So the marketing campaign was successful, however, okay? Or uh, we can say in spite of that, sales of the product haven't increased as much as expected. Yes, Ms. Simon. Yes, and we, uh, number 10, uh, I don't like Italian food, I don't and start for another thing. Space, comma, I don't eat pasta or pizza. So there is an explanation. However, therefore, as well, for example, oh yes. Generally, I don't like Italian food. And then I don't eat pasta or pizza. So, I have a specific here to say that about it. So it's, uh, however, no, it's no contradiction. Therefore, as well, therefore, this is a reason for that, a reason, giving reason after it. As well, as well, what? And for example, here, I'm going to give what? Number B, therefore, therefore, that's why I don't eat the pizza. I give the first one and this uh, this example. 
Okay, so moving to number 11. She doesn't have a sister, okay? And we have here a space. She has five brothers. Well, she doesn't have a sister, okay? And she, or, or, or we have, we miss a word here. She has five brothers. What do you think of the, the two sentences here? Is the second sentence an addition to the first one? Is it an addition? It, does it add you another meaning or another sentence to, to, to the first one? If it adds you more information, we could say as well, okay? Or we could say therefore. If it gives you an example for the first sentence, we could say for example. If it's in contradiction, okay, or an opposite of the first sentence, use however. So she doesn't have a sister. She has five brothers. Of course, the second sentence is in contradicted or in the opposite of in contrary of the first one. So the suitable sentence here or the suitable word is however she has five brothers. Okay. Yes, and we continue with number 12. Which of the following sentence is complete? Oh, complete sentence. So it has a meaning. He has not visited us in for 14 days. However, he has not visited us in 14 days. Though he was not, I'm sorry, though he has not visited us in 14 days. Although he has not visited us in 14 days. Now, which sentence give me a meaning for itself? Complete. Okay, so when I'm talking about complete sentence, there is no, it's all have it's the meaning in it. Let me see about number B. However, so what happened before it? Something happened before it and so however. Though, so also there is a completion, although is something to complete uh, about the story. So the complete one will give me the meaning and clear. He has not visited us in 14 days. It's a complete sentence with the meaning. I stated that meaning about it. Yes, Ms. Number okay. Yes. Uh, well, uh, let's continue, dear students, with number 13. So, which sentence is a fragment? Which sentence is a fragment? Well, I'll go to the body regardless of the rain. I'll go to the party despite the rain. I'll go to the party while the rain, okay? I'll go to the party in spite of the rain. So which one is a fragment in your opinion, dear students? Well, as you can see here, well, the, the, the suitable one uh, as a fragment, dear students, it gives you more illustration. Um, I'll go to the rain, uh, I'll go to the party while while the rain, okay? It, it doesn't give you a suitable meaning or a complete meaning. Something is missing here, something is not correct, okay? Yes, Ms. Amen. Yes, and 14. What do you call the first paragraph in a former essay? Here first paragraph in a formal essay, what we call it, beginning, introduction, hawk, grabber, what we call the first paragraph in a formal essay, beginning, introduction, hawk, grabber. Of course here beginning is not uh, that correct, so it's not a beginning, it's, it's a paragraph be beginning for a sentence. And a hawk, it's uh, an expression or uh, an idea that uh, grab you about this. So the grabber also, it's completing the hawk. So introductory uh, paragraph is uh, the correct one. It's introduction. We call it an introduction for my essay in a, the paragraph itself. Yes, number P, well done. Okay, so moving to 15. What do you call the last paragraph in a formal essay? So in a formal essay, the last paragraph, what do you think? The last paragraph, not last sentence, by the way, okay? 
So what do we call it? Is it an ending, a resolution, a final, or a conclusion? Huh. Well, it's pretty easy for you. Of course, we know that we have an introduction and we have the body of a paragraph and we have not an ending, of course, not a resolution, not final. Of course, it's a conclusion. So the last paragraph is a conclusion of the whole essay. Yes, sir. here we continue with the writings. What do you call the paragraphs where key ideas are developed and explained? The main idea is explained in the first paragraph, introductory, and then we develop and explain. Okay, mentioned. The main idea is mentioned in the first paragraph or the introductory, and then develop and explain. Body paragraph, introductory, key paragraphs, conclusion. Of course, you have to omit quickly conclusion and introduction. This is the first omitting from your eye. The first one. We have here the key paragraphs and the body paragraphs. Of course, the body paragraphs is containing the idea and its development and explaining what's in this idea, the main idea of the paragraph. So it's number A. Okay, and uh, moving to number 17. Well, what are the three elements must be included in an introduction, dear student? The introduction that we need to put in our essay. So, what are the three must have elements inside our introduction? Is it evidence, explanation, elaboration, or opinion, reasons, and evidence? Lead a background and a thesis, or a thesis and a restatement and conclusion. A restatement, sorry, a thesis, a restatement, and conclusion. What do you think? Well, it gives you an introduction to the whole essay. So you need to, to, to give what? To give um, an introductory about the information itself, give a background of the, the whole uh, subject or the whole topic, okay? And of course, you give, um, you give um, some sort of, um, you know, th some sort of a thesis to, to, to it, to the whole subject that you are going to discuss, uh, to give the, the main idea that you are going to illustrate or discuss in the whole essay. So an introduction, of course, must have a lead, a background, and a thesis, okay? A lead, a background, and a thesis. And uh, with 18 here, we have uh, space must be avoided in summary. Verbs, facts, idea, repetition must be avoided in the summary. You're giving summary. So watch one summary for the war. So it's, uh, what do you think, my dear student? Think about it. What's your matter? Yes, uh, now it's repetition. Don't give in the summary a lot of repetition. So just give uh, the whole main idea, so it's repetition number 18. Yes, Ms. Obama. Okay, and moving to number 19, dear student. Which of these is not a characteristic of a good essay? So a good essay must have three and mustn't have one of these four sentences. So what of these is not a characteristic of a good essay? Is it a personal touch, a formal style, brevity, or fakeness? What do you think? Good essay, of course, must have a personal touch. You, you have to put your own words, your own ideas, your own expressions, okay? So a personal touch, no, no, a good essay must have a personal touch. A formal style, of course, a good essay must have a formal style, okay? And uh, you need or you have to um, move away or stay away from informal styles. Brevity, of course, we have a brevity in a good essay, but fakeness, you know what fakeness, dear student? To tell lies, to tell things that's not true, to fake effects, uh, to, to fake facts and, and, and tell lies. 
So good is say must mustn't have fakeness, dear students. So this is the correct answer here, or the answer that's needed. Yes, and seven. Yes, uh, and we continue with 20. Space writing is uh, intended to influence others. Okay, influence others. Which one do you think? Uh, persuasive, descriptive, exploratory, narrative. Of course, it's narrative, you have to omit it. Descriptive, you have to omit it. So which one influence number which one we have here uh, so it would be number yes uh, it's number i think in the numbers uh, is uh, not yes correct. this is the letter okay, okay. So take, take the as the more one. dear students yes yes okay uh, it's okay it uh, will be number one it's the correct yes. one Persuasive influence is related to persuasive. Yes, and we have here good answer. Yes. And moving to the last one in, in this particular form, dear students, don't worry, we have another one for you. Well, how do you separate a paragraph or paragraphs in a say, in any say? How do we separate paragraphs with a space? With an indent, you don't separate paragraphs or with a capital letter. What do you think? Huh? If you have any say, how do you separate paragraphs from each other? Huh? A space, you put sentences and sentences and just uh, separate them with a space. Or you don't separate paragraphs, just write sentence after another, sentence after another. Or with just writing a capital letter. You know what's an indent? An indent, okay? It's a space or a, a big space, okay? Starting the paragraph with. At the beginning of our paragraph. You know, when you write, okay, let me show you something. So, uh, sorry. Okay, so if we have an essay, okay, or a paragraph you want to write, so start with this. You, you have to leave an indent here, a space, a large space here, okay? And continue with writing like this, okay? So we call this, we call this part here is an indent. So we separate paragraphs with an indent at the beginning, okay? Hope you got the idea, inshallah. Well, this is the end of this form, so let's continue with the general revision and wish you all, inshallah, get the meaning of it. Of course, don't forget to write your names. I already dropped you the link in the chat box, by the way. Yes, Ms. Saman. Yes, uh, and uh, thank you. Number two here, good sense and judgment. Based especially on your experience of life means. Okay, there's a meaning here and this expression. We have liberty, equality, Wisdom, freedom. Uh, if you have a good sense and judgment, good sense and judgment, and uh, based especially on your experience of life, so you have an experience of life and a good sense, which one do you think? What I call this person or this, uh, have this idea? Of course, it's, uh, it would be wisdom. You have a wisdom, it's not a freedom, it's not equality, it's not liberty, it's a wisdom. Yes, Ms. Wafa. Okay, moving to the next one, number three. He doesn't have any physical space, okay, but he didn't use to make any efforts. So in spite he doesn't have any physical what, any physical what, huh? but he didn't use to make any efforts. Well, is it suitability, stability, capacity, or disability? What do you think? So. He doesn't have, huh, you know, what are these words? Suitability, that he, he suits the place or he suits for, for the job. Uh, stability, that he is stable, he can do these things. Uh, capacity, it's um, uh, some sort of uh, the size of something, okay? Or disability, that he is, is, is not capable of doing things. So I guess it's now obvious for you, it's not clear. 
he doesn't have any physical disability, of course. He doesn't have any physical disability, but he didn't use to make any efforts. He is lazy to do any efforts. Yes, Mr. Wan. Yes, and we have here the space of water in the desert makes difficult to live there. Of course, here, what would you think about it? Oh, yes. Um, lack, water, lake, I'll take care. Lock, leak. Oh, it's almost uh, related to each other, so it will be what? It will be. Yes, it will be a lack of water, so a little water, lack of. We have, of course, lake. It's a little place with the water. It's very nice. And lock something closed or locked up something. And leak, uh, we call it, uh, it's uh, a water that's come from the ground or uh, from the tap. It's a leak. So it's a lack. There is a little of something. Yes, Ms. Ofa. OK, moving to number five, dear students. My mother taught me how space spicy food so how how to cooking to cook cook or cooking easy question easy question how to to plus plus what not ing of course okay huh me how how two plus infinitive two plus infinitive of course so um she told me how to cook Spicy food, not cook or not cooking or too cooking. Yes, and so many. Yes, and we continue here. Your essay starts with an introduction, but it should end with a or an. Okay, an or an what? Theme, option, conclusion, incident. Yes, so still here giving meaning for the words. What do you think? Your essay starts with an introduction, but should be end, end with. The. Of course, here we have conclusion, number C. Yes, it's conclusion. Okay, so now moving to number seven. These are the drops of water which fall from your eyes when you are sad. So when you are sad, what comes from your eyes? Is it eyebrows? Is it floods, oars, or tears? What do you think? Well, these are solely drops that comes from your eyes when you are sad or suffering from something. Of course, it's tears. Tears, not anything else. Yes, and so on. Yes, good people always space the law. What they do to the law? Okay. Violet, violate. Do you think violate? Oh no. Obey, disbelieve, break. Of course, good people never break, never violate because they have the same meaning to disturb it. Disbelieve? No, they didn't. They believe in the good things, so it's obeying the law. So the good people always obey the law and follow the law. You have obey and follow the law. Okay, so what about successful people? You usually have some difficulties, but they often overcome them. Overcome here means lose, contribute, defeat, or fail. Huh. When we say that you overcome the problem, you will overcome the obstacles. So what does the word overcome here means? Is it lose? No, no, no. Successful people don't lose their problems. Of course, they contribute. No, they, they in, in our uh, problems, we need to solve it by ourselves. OK, not contribute with others. So fail to fail our problems. So it's not successful anymore if we fail to manage our uh, or overcome our problems. So the only one is suitable here is the word defeat, defeat. 
So the word overcome here means to defeat their problems. Yes, Ms. Amani. Yes. You need, you, I'm sorry, you needn't wear these heavy clothes. Oh, it is the uh, space warm them. It is the wear them. So cold that you should wear them. Take care. First, say you needn't wear. So, so cold that you should. It's not with us. Cold enough to. Such a hot day that you don't have to wear them. Not hot enough to. Course here. Heavy clothes. No to wear them so it is not hot so i'm going to drop i'm sorry it's uh, uh, it's not cold so i'm going to drop so cold cold enough not hot enough such a hot day that you don't have to so a hot day number c okay moving to 11 and be with us please all of us space that it's important to follow your teacher steps. So all of us has known, is knowing, knows or know. What do you think, dear students? Huh. All of us, all of us, all of us what? Has known or is knowing or knows or know that it's important to follow your teacher steps. Of course, after all, OK, we have to bring something that's plural, not not um, singular. So has, is, knows is not correct. The only one is correct here is no, of course, all of us know. No, OK. Yes, OK, let's go back to number 10, please. I'm sorry. Someone OK, so moving to number 10. What's the matter with number 10? Yes, it's, uh, it's, it's ambiguous. Uh, someone want uh, to explain more. You needn't wear, so you, you don't have to wear. So it is uh, heavy clothes, so you, you shouldn't wear heavy clothes. Why? The weather is what? It's uh, cold? No, if it's cold, I wear it. But uh, it is uh, must be hot. That's why I shouldn't wear these heavy clothes. So such a hot day. The three choices, the other choices, the strong one because it's cold, so cold and not hot enough. I hope you got it, uh, inshallah. Thank you and I'm sorry for interruption so far. I oh, it's okay, Ms. Amani. Nice to have our dear students uh, asking with us. Yes. So we have now you, so I hope you got it, inshallah. Uh, yes, now, your turn uh, now. Yes. Yes. Uh, Twelve. It is common for us to have our stress space every day. It's common. Yes, we have it. Sweep. Swept. Sweep. Sweeps. It's common for us to have our street. What is about street? Every day. Our street. Our street. It's common to have our, so it will be what? Yes, you see she is explaining in a good way and she is writing. Yes, to have our treat what? The half, the past participle here done by someone, so it's swept. Done by someone, yes, that's why. Have something done or have something be done. Sorry, it, it become swept. The past participle and this was written to you. Have you got it, inshallah? So it's number B. Yes, correct. Good. OK, moving to 13 quickly, dear students. Ali is as tall as Tori. They are space height, so they are as tall as. It means that they are equal in tall, OK, or in their height. So they are, they are the most height, the same height, the same as height or the more. Well, what's the correct one? Huh. They are or they have, okay, the same height. 
I already gave you the correct answer. So they are okay, the same, of course, not the same as if we if we brought as uh, we we will have to uh, bring as as or so as okay, but we don't have it here. They are the same height. Okay. Yes, Mr. Yes. Number fourteen. Yes, well done, Muhammad. We have got two extra texts with us, space with us. And this a question mark here, take care. Are you traveling? Will you travel? Do you travel? Are you going to travel? We have an extra text. Yes. What do you think is completed here with us? OK, are you traveling? Will you travel? And uh, do you travel? Uh, are you going to travel? Yes. Here we is. she is writing and she is explaining quickly. OK, so it's yes. You see here it's very clear. It's an offer. So I'm not asking you, are you traveling? I can tell you, uh, you see, I have the tickets. I don't ask you, are you traveling? So it will, uh, will you travel with us? So we have a ticket, will you travel with us? You say, yes, of course, I like it, or no, I'm sorry, I'm busy. So here, as you said, it's an offer. It's not asking about it. Okay, thank you. And they, they already taken it, Miss uh, Amani, that with well, we use well in threaten, in offer, and uh, in, yes. uh, in uh, request things like that. They yes. they took it before. OK, so moving to 15, dear students, space sing the accident. My young sister screamed. So during seeing the accident, when seeing the accident, on seeing the accident or while seeing the accident, what do you think? Huh? Do you remember? Huh? What we bring here, and after that we bring the verb with ing. Is it during, huh. or when, or on, or while? Which one is the correct one? Of course, we have to bring on seeing the accident. My young sister screamed. It's on plus the verb plus ing. Yes, yes, and we go on with 16. All oh, the students got low marks. Oh, it's too bad. It's a space and easy exam. Oh, it must have been. Got low marks, take care. Yes, low marks here. So an easy exam. So this would be some contradiction here. Uh, must have been, no, no, no way. Can't have been, might be, maybe. So, might be, maybe, must have been, it's all affirmative that is easy. So, how comes it slow marks? So, the only one with the negative can't have been. It can't be have been an easy exam. It, can, it must be difficult if I want to use the the affirmation is must be difficult. Yes, well done. It's number D. Well done. Yes, okay, well moving done. quickly to 17. Yes, seven. okay. It space only when I had looked for my pen under the table that I found it. So it's only, it was only, it has been only. It had been only when I had looked for my pen under the table. What do you think? We have had looked here, okay? That I found it. So the first part is what? Huh. What do you think, dear students? Okay, moving quickly, quickly. It's gonna be, okay, pause sample, of course. So it's gonna be was, was, okay? So it was only when I had looked for my bin under the table. Yes, Ms. Amani? Yes, and we continue here with uh, take care with some writing. 
the applicant's space is written at the very top of your CV. The CV, okay, writing a CV. Uh, job title, so job title, address, name, objectives. Which one the applicant is going to write? What course is going to write his name at the very beginning in CV and introduces himself after that? It's number C, name. Okay, so number 19, which of the following is structurally correct? So, I structurally correct, dear students. Okay, so concentrate. Which one is the correct one? I haven't handed in my answer sheet until I had gone all, over all the question again. I didn't hand in my answer sheet until I had gone over all of the question again. I won't hand in my answer sheet until I went over all the question again. I didn't hand in my answer sheet until I have gone over all the questions again. So, of course, we have the two parts in a sentence, okay? And it's in the past. And we giving you a reason. Do you remember what we told you before? To give a reason for something happened in the past, we bring it in the past participle. Past participle, okay? Uh, um, uh, sorry, the past perfect. And the first part of the sentence or the first sentence is in the past sample. So to give a reason, to give a reason in the past, use the past perfect. Use the past perfect. So the, the only one is suitable here is number two. I didn't hand in my answer. Why? Why? Until I had gone over all my questions again. So we have here uh, past perfect. And we have here the past sample as we told you, dear sir. Yes, Mr. Man. Yes, and we have to go with number 20. In a body paragraph A or N, introduce it, the main idea and acts as a support for the phrases. Which one? Topic sentence, supporting sentence, conclusion, analysis. Of course, you have to admit quickly a conclusion because it's in the body. It's not a conclusion. Introduce the main idea. So we have here analysis, supporting sentence, topic sentence. You have to omit also topic sentence because it's the body, not in the introductory sentence. So here we have to admit too quickly. We have two things, supporting sentence and analysis. Which one do you think? Supporting to support as a support for. So the sentence is very clear, adding the same thing. So it will be what? I, I, I was mistaken. I'm sorry, dear students. This the strong mark is here, not, not in the first one. Sorry for that. So this should be the correct here. I'm sorry about that. OK, so we shall remove all of them. <laughs> yes, OK. We have here okay. topic sentence introduced to the main idea and acts as a support for the thesis. This is the body in a body paragraph. Or supporting sentence, it's the same thing. It's going to be so conclusion and analysis is not with us. Yes, sir. OK, so moving to 21 quickly. Would you explain this lesson for me, space? And we have a question mark. Mr. Hussam. Mr. with M a capital, Mr. Hussam, a comma, and Mr. Hussam, a dot, and Mr. Hussam. Do you remember, dear students, when we told you if we have a name, okay, and a question mark, put a comma before the name. Put a comma before the name if it's in the, um, in the, in the ending of a question or at the ending of the question. So would you explain this lesson for me? Comma and the name, of course. We, we have to bring a comma and the name. So the, the only one is correct here is comma Mr. Hussam, okay? But if we brought the name at the beginning, we will bring it Mr. Hussam and a comma, okay? So Mr. Hussam, comma, would you explain this lesson for me? Or if it's in the end or at the end of the question, bring the comma 
before the name, not after it. Before the name, okay? Yes, Ms. Seven. Yes, sir. And we have here number 20. Space means that things happen at the same time in a way that seems surprising or unusual. Oh, yes, means things happen at the same time, surprising and unusual. Okay, let's go quickly. We have here constituents, coincidence, conscious, confidence in things happened at the same time in a way that seems surprising and unusual. Which one? So it's called, we call it uh, something happened, we meet someone or uh, having things happen. Wow, it's, uh, it will be coincidence. It's coincidence. Yes. Okay, shall we end it, uh, Ms. Amani, and the canteen, inshallah, on the next session? What do you think? Very wrong, yes, we completed, yes, because we have out of time, and I hope my dear students will enjoy it, and uh, thank you for those who share with us. It's very nice. I hope you complete it, inshallah. Well done. Okay, dear students, we, inshallah, wish you to, to be with us in the next session, session, inshallah, on Tuesday. We will continue uh, the form with you. We will continue answering and giving you the reason for why we chose these answers or those answers, okay? So be with us, inshallah, on Tuesday and wait for us. Stay tuned and we all love you. Goodbye. Thank you, Ms. Aman. Thank you. And uh, next session, inshallah, we'll complete this form to complete the general revision. Those who are asking what will we take uh, next time, it will be general re uh, revision to complete this form. Good luck. Thank you.